guys welcome to color with donna i'm donna and this month we are in um dover spark month for the month of may 2019 that's hashtag dive into dover spark on social media and we're just celebrating the dover spark books that are available on the market for those of you who are, who are familiar with or unfamiliar with dover spark if you're not familiar with the name dover you may have heard creative haven dover is um, the publisher of the creative haven series and then you have your Dover books, and your Dover books are generally double-sided books, but the Dover Spark books, which are aimed at a younger group, um, I believe they said ages maybe 5 to 10 or 6 to 12, somewhere in there, um, are single-sided books, and um, we had all noticed that the, the pictures were great. They were a little more intricate than you would expect for a really young child, and some of us thought, hey, let's get these, let's try these out. So Lisa and I over at Lisa's Coloring Corner decided to dedicate this month to just a little celebration of the Dover Spark books. And so here we are. That should catch you up a little bit if you've missed the first couple of mine or Lisa's videos for the month of May. Today I'm going to be coloring in Cool Cats coloring book by Dover Spark. Um, Noelle Dolan is the um, illustrator here, the artist. And it's a really cute little book. The, the paper is pretty nice and thick in these books. Um, they're single-sided. They're perforated images. I'll just give you a quick little look in the um, cat's book for those of you. This is one that I've completed this month um, that might be interested uh, in some of these books. So you'll have just an idea of what's in this book. In the description down below, there are links to the Dover Spark coloring books over on Amazon. If you go through one of my links, if you're interested, I would really appreciate that. I am an Amazon affiliate, so I get just a few cents for um, every purchase that you make when you go to Amazon through my link. And you don't necessarily have to purchase anything that I've directly linked to. Once you click on that link, I should get credit for any of your purchases during that session at Amazon. So anytime you just kind of want to, you know, support the channel and support me or anything, you know, if you'll just come and click on one of my links to take you over to Amazon. Links are also on my Facebook page. Um, if you haven't joined us over at Color with Donna on Facebook, we would welcome you there. Great group of people, very supportive. And, um, you know, we just share images with each other, beginners to advanced, all kinds of, of um, skill levels. So come on over and share, and I'll share with you guys um, the link here, www.doverpublications.com. Over there, they generally have free sample pages from all kinds of their different books to include um, Creative Haven also, so you could get some freebies over there, um, coloring activities, arts and crafts, hobbies, books, things of that nature, and that's www.doverpublications.com, hashtag not sponsored. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm going to color this page today, and I'm going to be using my Aspire Color markers, and for those of you who are not familiar with Aspire Color, if you haven't been over on the Facebook group, you may not be familiar with Aspire Color, or you may have seen some people mention Aspire Color, but um, in April, I was lucky enough to get to test these wonderful markers. Aspire Color sent them to me to test, and I was on a little bit of a break, and I had, of course, been sick, and everything was going on. It was nuts, but I was able to chart out the colors and to test the markers, and I really do like the markers. There has been a little, um, there has been a few people who have said they've had some markers where the ink has kind of exploded out onto them because the markers seem to be way too full. Um, me personally, I would say take the caps off carefully, check that but I would rather have a too juicy marker than a dry marker, is my opinion. I did not have um, any issues with the set that I received. And um, when we purchased these, there were some coupons. I don't know if there's still any coupons available, but I will link to the Aspire Color markers also down in the description so you can check them out. I'll show you guys my swatches of those markers now just so you can see the swatch. 
um, they're thinking about taking some of the colors out, adding some new colors, because some people had said that some of the color tones were too close to each other, and adding some. And I'm trying to compile a list to get back to her and let her know what I think um, some of the colors that should be taken away would be, what might want to be added. My first impression is always ditch the fluorescence. In this set, you have a fluorescent coral red, orange, yellow, and green. I personally do not like fluorescent markers, so that's always my first thought is ditch the fluorescence and give me some other colors. But you have lots of greens, um, you have a couple oranges, a couple red, you know, a few reds, um, just a couple, you've got a couple yellows, you've got some blues, some blue greens, pinks, um, some purples. Um, in this set, then you also have some lighter colors, which are almost like a pastel, and that's the pale green light, spectrum green, phthalo blue, and pale blue light. You have some grays, blue grays, warm grays, green grays, cool grays. You have your black, and it does come with a colorless blender. There's 80 colors in the set. I'll show you guys the markers. This is the Aspire color marker here. And you have your broad chisel ends and you have your fine tip ends. Your color number and name is on the ends of the markers. And I like that they seem very well, um, very well secured in the caps. And, you know, I think they're fairly airtight. I really do like this set of markers and um, I think that I like them just as much as um, any of the other budget-friendly markers that are on the market. They are kind of a rectangular shape, but the sides are rounded off. I think it's comfortable in my hands, and I would definitely recommend these as a budget-friendly marker if you're um, in the market for those. So I'll leave a link down below to those, and you can just kind of see how they work. I have used these a lot. So with that being said, um, I do not know if I'm going to start running out of color um, when I start working on these, so hopefully that doesn't become a problem. But, um, like I said, they have been used quite a bit, so it would not surprise me if one of the markers started deciding that it wasn't going to give me any more ink. All right, so let me take a sip here. All right. And we will get started. I hope you guys are doing well. I did receive a phone call back from the vet on Bradley. And it is a urinary tract infection. Poor little booger. It must run in my family pretty strong. Because if you guys remember, I've had all kinds of issues dealing with that myself. So that would explain, I know when I've had them, I'm in pain and I don't feel well at all. So that hopefully does explain the eating um, issues, him not wanting to eat, um, and just seeming a little blah. And so I was right. I knew that there was something wrong with my pups. People were calling me kind of crazy there for a while and thinking that I was reading too much into things. But... Apparently not. Um, all of his other blood tests were good, so there's no other issues. Um, the only thing that they found was the urinary tract infection, so he is being treated for that. They gave him, I can't remember the actual brand name, but it is amoxicillin with some potassium, and they're chewable pills. He would not eat it for me, so I did take a pill um, crusher, and I crushed the pills up really well, and I put them in just a little bit of wet food and stirred that around, and I was able to get him to um, eat that food. So hopefully he'll get plenty enough of the medication doing it that way because he just um, doesn't have much of an appetite, so I was kind of worried about whether or not he was gonna eat the food that I laid down. I'm glad he did. Hopefully he'll continue to do that and that won't be an issue. I'm just gonna have to make sure that nobody's offering him anything yummy because they feel sorry for him because we've kind of done that 
since he's been so picky, we found things that no self-respecting dog would turn down. And, you know, fried chicken, things like that, just to be able um, to get him to eat a little bit. And I'm just going to have to put everybody on notice that that's got to stop. And he's going to get offered just his wet food. And it's going to be a small amount probably for the next 10 days because I need to make sure that he's hungry enough that when I offer him this little bit of food with this medication in it, that he's going to eat um, the food because that's going to be the only way to get this into his system. All right, this was GY47 Grass Green from the Aspire Colors. And now I'm going to go in with Vivid Green, which is G46. They are pretty similar colors, but there should be enough difference in the colors that um, it'll kind of, you know, give this a little something. And I'm just straight coloring. I did try to do some blending um, the other day, and it wasn't working real well with me with this Dover paper. And I don't know if it was, because I was using my touch news and I don't know if it was the fact that my markers were kind of dry is why I was having those kind of issues or if it was the paper or maybe I'm just not good at it unless it's on um, good cardstock and I don't I don't know so I'm not gonna try that again just yet I do need to practice around a little bit with that off camera and see if I can try to figure that out uh, Deb Lore shared a picture over in the Facebook group, and it was the same picture from my last video that I did um, try to do the blending on the tigers. And she was using, mm, I cannot remember what marker she said she was using. It was a budget friendly marker. It may have actually been these Aspires, maybe. But she did a wonderful job on her blending. I asked her if she would make me a video. Um, to show me exactly what she did and hopefully she'll do that for me. I wanted to share it with you guys <coughs> Excuse me So she could show us all and She said that she can't do videos like that and I think she can so if you guys um, Are curious about blending especially if you're in the Facebook group and you saw that picture and thought she did a great job and you kind of want to see then leave comments down below she watches all my videos and she comments she'll see your comment comment down below and say Deb get over yourself make a video Donna was scared too and I was when I first started making the videos I was terrified to come on here with you guys no idea why no one's ever bit me so maybe Deb will do that for us if not I hope she'll at least do it for me so I can see what she did and then I can pass that along to you guys if I can do it myself. So yeah, I think that would be awesome. Okay, I'm gonna go in with RP89 Pell Purple, and right now I'm just kinda just picking some colors, and kind of at random, honestly, just to get some color down on these, and also to give you guys a chance to really see how these markers kinda work, and everything and it's like I said I, I normally don't like to when I do a you know any kind of review type thing I really generally like to have a very good you know, new product to show but um, I did get these in April and I colored with them like constantly for several days I did several days so if they start going dry it's not a reflection of the marker it's um, just simply a reflection of the fact that I really did love them and I use them a lot. So it seems that I'm getting sick again. Um, it started just a couple days ago and I've got the whole sinus drainage thing going on again. You may be able to hear that my voice is kind of funny. I'm pretty stopped up. Um, I'm really hoping and praying this does not become a sinus infection and does definitely not get back into my chest with the bronchitis again. That had to have been like one of the most sick I had been in a very long time. I don't recall the last time I felt that sick. And it lasted over two weeks the last time and I'm just, I don't have the heart for it. It's, I guess, been 
almost two weeks that I have been feeling better. And now here we go again. So it's been a really rough pollen season here and I have no clue what it is that I'm so allergic to because past seasons have not been this bad. So I'm not really sure. I asked the pharmacist yesterday. I had to go pick up some medication for Gary. And I hope you guys weren't framed for that. And I um I asked the pharmacist about it, and she said that she believes it's the privets that are um causing a lot of the issues right now. I'm not really sure. Um but I am keeping my fingers crossed that I will not get like I was before. Last night, I was up almost all night just coughing and coughing and coughing. It was crazy. And poor Gary had to work a 24-hour shift today. So, I felt really bad. But, you know, I can't really help it. We do have some cough syrup that contains fenugrin. But the fenugrin doesn't react well to my system. Um, with the sensitivity issues that I have. I did try some when I was so sick, but it did seem to cause some muscle jerks, and those bother me so bad. So, I didn't get up and take any, and I kind of regret it. I felt bad during the night coughing so much, um, but then I called Gary today and asked him if he was mad at me, and he's like, um, no, sh should I be? And so, my reaction was like, well, you must have took some good medicine last night if you're not, because I coughed all night long. And he did, yesterday he went with a friend and helped him take down an old barn. And they were on top of this barn in the heat and the sun. Here it was like 80 degrees out, direct sunlight. Um, they were up there and they did a lot of other, I mean, they tore the tin roof off. They tore the whole barn down yesterday and, um, he was just whipped when he got home and I mean, worse than any day of firefighting that I believe I've ever seen. Um, totally whipped and you guys know he has back issues and all of this and he was hurting so bad. So he did take some pain medication and things. Um, to kind of help that, and then he took some melatonin. So, I guess it was a good thing that he was pretty doped up last night, um, to get some, some, you know, much needed sleep. Generally, when he takes, um, he's so sensitive to medication, you know, the least little thing will actually really help him rest. Even the, um, that Finnegan cough syrup, oh my goodness, it knocks him out like a light. And, you know, I thought, goodness, did he get into some of that? Did he hear me coughing? And was like, wow, if she's not going to take it, I will. But, um, yeah, so I felt really bad about that. But on a good note, today I don't think it's draining quite as bad because I don't seem to be coughing as much today. Of course, that could mean that it's settling in my chest nicely. I hope that's not the case. Um, but I mean, I can't say that that's not a possibility, I suppose. But um, I'm still having ear pain and I'm really chugged up. and I kind of just feel really blah. But yesterday I was actually having aches and I was feeling really, really weak. And I was like, oh, joy. Um, we ran out last night to get a bite to eat and because I, I really didn't feel like cooking and you know he had been out all day so I drove even though I didn't feel good because I knew how bad he was hurting and we drove in to the next city over to my favorite Chinese buffet I love their uh, salt and pepper shrimp mm, and their coconut shrimp yum so I drove us over there and it turned out that Michael and Caitlin, my son and his beautiful wife, um, came in to eat there also. It was so awesome. You know, we had no idea each other was going. So it was kind of neat to get to run into them. So I got to have dinner with Michael and Caitlin um, yesterday. 
and Michael had a stethoscope in his car, so he did listen to my chest yesterday, and he said that he didn't hear anything in my chest or bronchioles, so, you know, he's a paramedic. Also, and I don't know if I've told you guys, but big, big congratulations to him. He's been hired on with the same fire department my husband works for. So, first father-son team. Um, Gary can't, you know, directly supervise Michael or anything like that. But here, our uh, fire department is combined with our um, EMS. So, paramedics and firefighters both work for the exact same for the fire department. Um, they do like for their guys to be both firefighters and paramedics or EMTs or what have you, but Michael is um, was hired as what's known as a PMO, which is paramedic only. He really doesn't have any um, interest or desire for firefighting, at least right now, not right now and at this point in his career. But as a PMO, they do get them trained in basic firefighter one, which um, teaches you the basics of firefighting. So you can do the things outside of a burning building. You just can't go inside. So you basically become fire support. So he will be getting that within his first year of employment. So that, I mean, that's a good thing. And then, of course, if he ever decides that he wants to um, do more, then he'll be able to do that um, and get his firefighter to and start working on that. All right, I'm going in with RP87 Azalea Purple. So, I've been really excited for him. My other beautiful daughter-in-law, Leah, I believe has gotten, oh, Leah, if you're watching, or Jordan, make a comment. Is it your medical assistant? license that you just got she had something like that recently I can't remember exactly but she um, has decided to pursue a very similar career I guess we have a lot of medical minded people because even though Gary's a firefighter he's also a paramedic um, and I think Leah's doing very well and I'm very proud of her for all she's accomplished Jordan is still in Iraq. He has about three months left um, before he'll be headed back home. And I'm very um, excited that he'll be moving home, or moving home, he'll be coming home soon. Granted, when I say he's coming home, he'll be coming back to Fort Bragg, North Carolina, where he's stationed and you know I'm in Georgia so we'll still be like six hours apart but I'll take six hours over across the ocean any day um, so that'll be nice and I've asked them if they'd like to do um, a late really late summer early fall camping trip when he gets back and he seemed receptive to that so that would be a lot of fun sorry I dropped my um, marker lid I'll have to pick that up here in just a second but that could be a lot of fun, I think. And I did mention it to Michael and Caitlin to see if they might want to go along also. That would be so amazing for me to be able to have even just a weekend camping trip, if that's what it turned into, with um, both of my boys and their wives. Caitlin is doing wonderful. She's teaching high school English doing well with that. Um, I believe this is closing up her second year of teaching and that's awesome. Um, very proud of her and she's doing really well. So my kids, I'm, I'm very proud of my boys and, and my girls. I am. My, um, my stepdaughter from my previous marriage seems to be doing very well also. I try to keep up with her. I still love her with all my heart and soul. Her name's Carrie. She's working at a um, drug testing facility and she's doing very well and I'm very, very proud of her. She's come so, so, so far. 
And um, my stepson, Thomas, he's doing really well also in California. Um, he's still with his mom for right now. Um, but he's, he's doing really well, and I'm very proud of him. Um, my kids have done, I'm just, I could not be more proud as a mom with the lives that my kids um, have have made for themselves. You know, I think as parents, when we're raising our kids, we always wonder if we're messing up. And when we know that we've messed up or in some way fell, some way fell fallen short, as a parent, we go, you know, in our mind, we're like, oh my gosh, I just ruined their whole life. And it just feels so good now to be able to look at them and say, you know what, from my failures, they drew success. You know, they, they have taken a look at that and they see those failures and they're okay. And they build upon those mistakes. And then the successes, the, the good things that you instilled in them to know that they stuck and that they're doing well. It's just, and it's, it's not, I'm not, you know, patting myself on the back because, oh, I fell short so many times. But, you know, what I'm saying is that it, I'm just very, very proud of them. And, you know, I can at least say if I messed up that they were strong enough to pick it up and go with it, you know. So I'm just tickle pink and proud over them. Michael and Caitlin are going to begin fertility treatments soon with injections. Um, they've tried some other things and those things have been unsuccessful due to her PCOS and they are going to start fertility injections soon and I believe this is the um, thing that could cause multiples. Um, I, uh, when they first did the first round of some kind of treatments, I forget exactly what it was that they were doing. I asked about that and apparently there was an extremely, extremely low risk that there would ever be multiples because of that treatment. This treatment, however, has a higher risk of multiples. Um, and it was so funny because there's always been, you know, I'd always said I wanted my grandkids with me as much as possible. Um, I'd always said that as long as I wasn't, you know, having to work or, or, you know, unable physically that I would babysit my grandchildren. That way they did not have to be kept by strangers and things. They would be with the family and all of that. And that's always kind of been my stance. It's always what I wanted to do. And when they told me about these um, treatments that they were about to start, I was like, oh yeah, you're going to end up with multiples. And they're like, oh, that's fine. I was like, oh yeah, no, not if you still want that babysitting offer. It's not. <laughs> I was like, oh goodness, my children were all far enough apart in age. You're going to have some noise. I'm looking for the top for this. But my kids were always far enough apart in age that it seemed like I would get a child out of diapers and then it would be like, congratulations, you're pregnant. <laughs> that was the way things were. Um... So, this is YR32 Deep Yellow. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, I don't even know what it's like to have two babies that you have to check diapers all the time with. Um, my children were about four years apart, each one of them. And, you know, I think it was Michael made a little snide comment. He's like, oh, mom, we're just going to go ahead and get it over with. You want, you know, four grandbabies? We're going to give you all four at the same time. And I'm like, yeah, that's not funny. So, but, you know, if they're able to successfully conceive, we'll be thrilled with whatever um, God blesses us with, whatever he sees fit, you know, to bless us with. And we'll work through that and, and deal with that. Honestly, I've been trying to become okay with the idea that I may not be able, you know, to have grandchildren. Leah's having a few issues also right now that could potential could potentially um, cause her to have fertility issues also. And 
you know, so I've been trying to just kind of accept that um, I may not have grandchildren. Uh, so I really wasn't expecting the, we're going to do the fertility treatment, and this is, you know, the fertility treatment that's generally the most successful and causes multiples, and, you know, so who knows? Who knows? Only the good Lord above. And, um... Whatever he sees fit to bless us all with, we will be thankful and grateful. And we will love him, her, they, um, him, her, them, as, as you know, with all of our hearts. No doubt. So, that's what's been going on with that. We actually, it was really awesome because Cinco de Mayo, we went to a Mexican restaurant. And Michael and Caitlin joined us for that. And then to run in the, to them the very next night at the Chinese restaurant, I know, I'm eating out way too much, was it's probably Chinese, Mexican, it does not equal lose that weight I need to lose. I understand. But it's good. Um, and it was Cinco de Mayo. I wanted, you know, margaritas. <laughs> so, <laughs> we did that. But, um, yeah, it was really awesome to see them both days, you know, in a row. That was great. Oh, excuse me. Okay, I'm going to use the Y37 Pastel Yellow. I feel like I'm getting more chugged up the more I talk. It's kind of crazy. So things have been going pretty good. Um, I started to get a little... Um, I, I wanted to color something other than Dover Spark, so I started coloring in the uh, Coloring Heaven Gothic Angels magazine the other day, and I had just a blast coloring in that little magazine, and I pulled out Fairy Miracles and colored a picture out of Fairy Miracles early this morning. So, I found out that my sweetie Deb is going, she is sending me the Mandala um, book for Spark. So, it should be in the mail tomorrow. I'm really excited over that. Um, and so my next video, I'm going to tell you now, will be out of the Mandela Dover Spark book. So if you guys have that book and you want to do like a color along with me, be ready. That's what I'll be doing in my next video for sure. Um. The book should come tomorrow, but um, it's going to be, I'm not going to film a video again until Friday. This will probably be released on Wednesday. So, if you guys are seeing this on Wednesday or even Thursday, my Mandela book won't be, I won't do my video until Friday. And it won't actually post until probably Saturday. So if you guys are interested in coloring um, something along, what I will try to do is, um, this is Lemon Yellow Y35. Um, I will try to post the picture that I intend to color over in the Facebook group. So, those of you who are members in the Facebook group, you'll have a heads up. So, if you want to go ahead and buy that book, and once you see this video, and be ready, I'll post what I intend to color out of it. Um, I get the book tomorrow. I'll try to look through it and post it tomorrow. Um, yeah, I'll try to post tomorrow which one I'm going to color. And then... That way, you know, you would have the book and be able to do the actual color along. 
if you wanted to actually color along with me when I do the video. So you'll know, you'll have the book and know which one I'm gonna color. Okay, I'm gonna use white, maybe, maybe. Give me a second. Don't wanna speak too soon. Let me think. Hmm. Yeah, maybe I think that's what I'll do. Um, I'm going to use YR20, YR23, which is the orange, and do this guy's little stripes. Okay. I'm supposed to have a follow-up with my urologist tomorrow. Yeah. And um, once I finish videoing, I think I'm going to call and try to cancel that appointment. And I'll reschedule it for um, another time. Give me a chance to get over whatever this is that I got going on. I just don't want to go into a doctor's office not feeling well. YR25 is salmon pink but um I want to I want to be well when I go to the doctor and the appointment's so early in the morning and when I'm all chugged up like I am right now when I first wake up in the morning it's hack hack cough cough hack hack cough cough and as it is I am supposed to be there at 8 o'clock in the morning <coughs> excuse me oh my goodness Oh, didn't even have time to pause the video for that. But I'm supposed to be there at 8, and it's that time of morning. I'll have to leave here at probably 7 to make sure I'm there on time. And that puts me getting up at like 5.36. And yeah, I just don't know that I want to do that not feeling well. So I think I'm going to call and cancel that. And Gary's going to be upset with me for calling and canceling it. But the truth of the matter is, you know, he put me on... You guys can't even see what I'm coloring. I'm so sorry. He had put me on a hormone cream um, thinking that that was going to solve some issues and that it wasn't necessarily urological. And um, I can't really test that theory. You know, this was about my recurring um, infections that I had had, UTIs. But I can't really test that theory because um, I've been on antibiotics like twice since I was in his office. So that would have kept any recurring UTI from coming back in itself. So I can't say, yeah, the cream's working for sure. Not yet. And um, I have enough of the cream to last me at least probably another two months. At least a month, if not two months. So, I think I would just rather reschedule. And maybe that's just procrastinating and stuff, because I really didn't enjoy that last visit to that office. But it's my excuse, and that's what I'm going to roll with. I feel like I've been so just sickly. The past... I want to feel well again. And, you know, I've made a habit out of, you know, I'm getting older. My back's got um, injury, and I am getting older, so my joints hurt more and, you know, all these things. But I've kind of made it a habit because of these pains and aches of making the comment, I don't feel good, which is true, you know. But now when I try to explain to Gary that I'm getting sick again and I'm like I don't feel good he's like you never feel good he's like you say that every day I'm like no I really don't feel good he's like you say that every day and I was like okay I said I guess I'm gonna have to start saying I'm sick <laughs> maybe it's gonna have to be I hurt 
But, of course, he doesn't have very much sympathy for the aches and pains, um, for the back injuries or any of that kind of stuff because he has so much of that wrong with him also. But, uh, and I don't feel good most days, you know. But, I'm going to have to start distinguishing about what I mean. Getting old is not for sissies. So, for you young people out there watching, just remember that. Getting old is not for sissies. And see, to me, the salmon pink has more of an orange tint to it. Or, you know, a peachy tint. So, I think it goes good with the orange. I think. Okay. I'm going to... Going to... I'm going to... I'm going to put pale green down. If I can find my pale green. I hope... Here it is. I hope it's not almost out of ink. But I'm going to put it here on the grass. I've used these markers so much. But as you guys can see, I mean, they lay down a really pretty color. The color's very vibrant. Um, I really like these markers. So I'm kind of going to use this as my review video of the Aspire markers. Since I did not get to make just, you know, a specific video for the Aspires when I first got them. So this will be my review of the Aspires. And I do like them a lot. For the colors that come with the in the set. You know, I wish they would bump it up to maybe a hundred set. I think that would be awesome. And she says in the future they may do that, but they want to peg you know, they're, they're 80 count first, but when you figure in price wise, they're very, very comparable to the other budget friendly markers. And when you look at the colors and things, honestly, I think I like this set best. Um, maybe even out of the, the budget friendly brands. I think they feel really good in my hands. And the colors are bright and vibrant. The ink goes down very nicely. The markers are very juicy when you get them. I did not have the problem with the um, overfilled markers. But like I said, you know, if you get these, just be careful opening the caps for the first couple times. Make sure that everything's secure the way it's supposed to be. And you should be fine. I would rather have a marker that's too juicy than a marker that's dry and that's that's my opinion so check your markers when you first get them don't just sit you know don't sit down over a color page and start opening up new markers because I've had Copics leak okay so it's not um, a reflection of a bad marker or a bad brand because like I said I my Copics have leaked on me before Oh, goodness. A little kitty cat has bow. Okay. Okay, I'm going to go in with B63, which is Creely and Blue. And I'm going to do these top areas um, and the bottom area of the picture in that. Oh, goodness. So, I hope you guys have been going over and visiting Lisa at Lisa's Coloring Corner. Um, there's a link uh, to her channel in the description of the video below. If you've not been over there, please um, go over and visit her also. She's taking part in this month-long um, celebration of the Dover Spark books also. 
and um, she's a great colorist, and uh, she's also a member over on my Facebook group, and I appreciate her being there, and I want you guys um, to go and support her, and if you have came here from Lisa's Coloring Corner, welcome to my channel. Um, I'm a little quirky, and I may say some off-the-wall things at times. Um, I get frustrated, and sometimes I have to have a vent session um, with things that are going on in my life. So this is kind of, sometimes it becomes like a video diary book almost, or an audio or podcast. I mean, I don't know what you would call it, but, you know. Um, or I really give you guys some insight. I am a marker girl. I love my markers. Um, they are my absolute favorite medium. So that is what you will see me on camera with the most. I do um, also like my gel pens a lot. Um, and I like, you know, I color with those a lot. Um, I also like my Faber Castell pit pens. Um, and I use them. I love to use Pebbles Chalks for backgrounds, um, other soft pastels, things of that nature. I really do want to get better with pencils. That's just never been my jam. Um, I'm trying. I promise you guys I am. It's just when I was so sick, I, you know, I was sick for over two weeks and I've been using my pencils a lot leading up to all that. It's my month off in April because of some personal issues and then I got sick and I haven't touched my pencils at all in April or yet in May, but you know, I do want to get better with my pencils. So maybe eventually I'll be bringing those in as well. I have the ink tents, yay! So I really want to pull those out and start working with those some and getting the hang of them. So hopefully we'll be able to pull out those. But I do want to have the opportunity to welcome you and you know tell you that you will see a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of markers here. Um, I've had a lot of brands of markers and I enjoy working with all kinds of brands of markers and playing around with those and working with those. Um, so, you know, just welcome and thanks, you know, for being here. I hope you'll consider subscribing. Um, I just chit chat and color and have fun. I'm not a tutorial channel. There are a lot of tutorial channels out there and I definitely do, you know, not want to take away from how wonderful they are because, um, I learn new things every day and, you know, whether it be from watching a tutorial myself or through trial and error, and I don't have a problem in the world um, showing you guys what I've learned or how I do something, but I'm never going to make a video and say this is how to do something. Maybe, hey, look what I figured out, but never, you know, this is it. Because there's people that do that, and they do wonderful, wonderful jobs doing that, and, you know, I'll leave that up to them. But, so, you know, you may see me from time to time show you guys how I do things. But, um, I'm a color and chat channel. I love to chit chat and just share my life with you guys. Um, I don't get out much. Um, I have some disabilities that I deal with due to some very serious side effects to medications that I had in the past. So... Um, I don't get to get out much. I don't get to socialize as much as I would like to. So I don't have a lot of friends um, that I get to hang out with and uh, chit chat with and all of that. And that's kind of what you guys are to me. You know, you're you're my friends. You're my line to what's going on in this big world. And um, I enjoy sharing my life with you guys. And um, I like hearing about your life. You know, and what's going on with you guys. I feel like I've developed some um, wonderful connections with people that I would have never met if it had not been for this channel and I feel so blessed to have these people in my life and each one of you who fit in that category I am sure know who you are and um, you mean the world to me and I would have never met these people and just to have people you know just reach out to you and check on you and, and you get to you know kind of have that connection it's it's a really awesome thing and it's something I wouldn't probably have without my YouTube channel 
So, you know, I enjoy that a lot. And, you know, for so long, I used Color Tube as a way to have someone to color with because I really don't know anybody in, you know, the real world that colors. So, um, I always turned to Color Tube and, and, um, some of these other ladies that have channels are the people that I colored with, especially Anne over at A Colorful Life. Um, and then one day I thought, hey, you know, maybe I could do this. And I worked through my social anxiety issues and I made my first few videos that I was absolutely terrified to make and um, floundered. <laughs> through those and um, here I am today I just like to sit and color and chit chat and get to know people and share experiences and my love of color with other people who enjoy the same thing and I created the Facebook group color with Donna over on Facebook and links are in the description to that and I just created that kind of as um, a way to communicate with you guys in like real time and also for you to be able to share the pictures that you guys color you know with me because I can sit and color with you guys and I show you guys my end of the month pictures for the month and everything on my videos but I wasn't able you know to see what you guys were coloring and I wanted to be able to do that and the Facebook group has enabled me to do that and that's awesome and um you know, I, I enjoy, I enjoy that, and I like to think it's not like any other coloring Facebook group, because so many of the other groups have such strict rules and regulations, and I try to pride myself on not having those and being, you know, really strict about things. Um, if you're having just a really, really hard day and you need somebody to talk to, you're more than welcome to co come over to the group and say, you know, I'm having a bad day, and is there anybody out there who would be willing to just chit-chat for a while? I don't have problems with that at all, and I know a lot of other groups would be like, uh, yeah, no, that's not coloring related. We don't need to talk about that, and that's just not how I fly, because I think that um, we all come to coloring for reasons, and generally those reasons are things that people may need support for. Um, I mean, let's face it, the majority of us in the coloring community or art community at whole has issues with whether it be depression, grief, um, physical ailments, pain, you know, whatever. There's, there's something that brought us here. Normally, and I may take a lot of, a lot of flack for this, this is pale blue light. But from what I've seen, and I'm just, I'm not saying this to be 100% true, but from what I've seen, just kind of popping around and taking looks places, generally people in the art community, we're not the most stable individuals in the world. <laughs> I mean, we're just not. The art community is a very unique group of people who come from very diverse backgrounds, but those backgrounds are generally... Um, generally have painful stories to go around with them and that's that's kind of what I'm finding with the art community so um, I think that the art community is a wonderful community and I love being in it and a part of it and I want to foster an environment where um, we can surround ourselves with you know people who share our passions and um, are there, you know, just knowing that you have somebody that you can reach out to um, all too often in this world, people who think they're normal, and I just want to tell you guys there's no such thing as normal, but people who walk around and think they're normal tend to um, think that those of us who know we're not normal have, um, should be looked down upon, you know, they kind of look down on us because we, you know, we're probably truly more normal than they are because we know we're not normal. You know, you've probably heard the old, the saying before that um, crazy people don't know they're crazy and people who say they're crazy really aren't. And it's kind of that way, I think, when it comes to people who think they fit the norm. 
they're generally some of the most abnormal people in the world. But um, it's just nice to be able to have some love and support out there. And that's just kind of the community that I want to foster. And that's what I hope you'll experience on my Facebook group. And if you ever um, decide to join my Facebook group or if you're there and you're not experiencing that type of environment in any way, please don't hesitate to contact myself or Kim Trainer or Deb Lore. They're my moderators, and um, one of the three of us would be happy to listen to whatever your feelings are um, if you don't think that that's the type of environment that you found yourself in, because we will do all we can to quickly correct that if it is indeed um, an issue that we can address. We, we will address it, because that's just the type um, of community that I want over there and I think that they're like minded in that and they agree I think both of them um, especially Deb I know for sure wants that exact same thing and I'm sure Kim feels the same way I've granted I've, I haven't had that specific conversation with her um, as to what she would definitely want to, to have at the channel but um, I have had some of those conversations with Deb so either one of the three of us um, are willing to listen if there's ever a problem. You know, if you've got a problem with someone in particular, remember there's always a block button. And if you block that person on Facebook, you won't have to see what they say and they don't see what you say. And that's an easy problem solved because everybody's personalities are not always going to jive with each other. And that's just... You know, that's just life. There's always going to be those kind of situations. But if somebody's being out of line and they're not being supportive or anything like that, uh, I will take issue in a minute. So, hopefully some of you will, if you haven't already, will come over there and join us also. I'm hoping to start being around the Facebook group a lot more than I have been in the past. Um, now that I've said that I'm only gonna I'm going to try at least in the nice weather to film every third day instead of the stressing I was doing over trying to get a new video out every day every other day um, but I want to be active in the Facebook group when I'm not filming. So, sometimes I may not be the best at, you know, things may be kind of busy or hectic going on with me, and I may not be the best at commenting on every picture that gets put up there, but I'm looking at them. I get notifications when people post to the group, um, and I do go several times a day and just kind of flip down through the group and see what's going on and see what everybody's doing and I'm going to try to start commenting a lot more than I have been so everybody you know definitely knows that I'm there I want to work on fostering some relationships also with some of the people who are there because I've noticed there's a lot of people in that group that don't post comments over here on YouTube and I want to get to know those people because I'm more familiar with those of you who are always commenting here um, than maybe the people who are always commenting or posting there. And I want that to be equal on both fronts. I want to get to know everybody. Because some people may not be comfortable in sharing or, um, you know, doing things on one platform, but they feel a lot more comfortable in another. And the Facebook is a closed group, so it, you're only getting um, accepted into the group by one of the moderators. And um, so that way, hopefully, we'll be able to keep out um, anybody that's just there to scam and, um, you know, skim and, and all of that. I know I do, and, and I know Deb does, and I'm sure Kim does also. Um, when someone hits the request to join button, we kind of look and see what other groups they're members of and if um, if someone requests to join and they're not a member of any other coloring group 
and it doesn't look color related their page or whatever in any way shape or form you know we generally say something to each other and say hey this person just joined the group I just approved their membership just you know they're not in any other coloring groups and that way we can be on the lookout just to kind of make sure because everybody's welcome of course but we want to make sure that there's nobody there for any reason other than for the love of coloring and it just kind of gives us that little heads up that you know hey this person may or may not and you know a lot of times I can say oh yeah I know exactly who that person is you know no big deal but I mean everybody gets approved everybody's gonna have that opportunity Do you guys know what I'm saying I hope so because I feel like I'm starting to ramble you know you guys know it's so easy for me the first maybe 30 minutes of my coloring boy I can talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and then I start kind of getting down towards you know after that point moving forward I'm kind of start struggling for things to talk about so and that's when I have a tendency to start rambling but this has been a lot of fun finishing this up here and uh, like I said I'll be getting my mandala book tomorrow so if you guys want to color along with a mandala that's going to be the next one I do and that's going to be the mandala coloring book by Dover Spark follow the links down in the description if you want to pick that book up before um, that video will air Saturday or Sunday probably so that way you'll have the book if you want it beforehand um, and there she goes all right let me zoom out on this all right, there's my picture. What do you guys think? What do you guys think of the expire markers? That's probably my biggest question. I think they're great. I really, really do. I like the expire markers a lot. There's links down in the description if you're interested in these. And just so you know, Aspire Color is a small family-owned business here in the United States. So anytime you email them, you're going to get a response um, fairly quickly. It's going to... Um, be a small business owner who cares about their product and really cares about their customers. So I don't think that you can go wrong with the Aspire colors. So by all means, click on the link down below. Go and check these markers out. If you have them, let me know what you think. Um, if you'd be interested in getting them, let me know that also. I would appreciate you using my link. I will get a small percentage back from your purchase. All right, so thank you guys so much for tuning in today. I hope you guys have enjoyed this color and chat. I've enjoyed being here with you guys, and I'll be back again Saturday or Sunday with a mandala video. And until then, guys, peace, love, and happy coloring. Bye, guys.